This is the mighty Brahmaputra River. Originating in the Mansarovar Lake region, it charts a seemingly endless length of 3,000 kilometers, irrigating vast expanses of land along its course. This river is one of the highest and deepest in the world, flowing 1,700 kilometers through Tibet before entering India. It flows east for the majority of its course and then takes a sharp turn down south into India. At this turn, the river drops a whopping 3,000 meters through a gorge before gushing cross-border into Arunachal Pradesh. This crucial turning point of the river is called the Great Bend. On December 25th, 2024, China made the historic decision of approving the construction of the world's largest hydropower project, known as the Medog Hydropower Station. Its location also makes this dam one of the most difficult and dangerous engineering feats in the world. In a remote corner of the Tibetan plateau, surrounded by towering mountains, China plans to tap into the river's power, all while facing one of the planet's harshest environments. Brahmaputra is one of the most powerful rivers in the world. Known by different names as it traverses across many countries, Yarlung Sangpo in Tibet, Jamuna in Bangladesh. Its story and path stretches across borders, cultures and histories. This mega project, the Medog Dam, has been years in the making, dating back to China's 14th five-year plan. The scale of the project is mind-boggling. The dam will be capable of producing 60 gigawatts of electricity, enough to power over 5 crore homes. This is more than thrice the capacity of China's Three Gorges Dam currently the largest hydropower facility in the world, or 60 times the capacity of India's largest hydroelectric power plant, the Tehri Dam. In a, typically in a run of the river project, you have a dam in the upstream, and then you divert the water uh, from the dam after going through the desilting chamber into a tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel, you have a hydropower station where you have turbines and then generators and then through that tailless water, it comes back to the river. So this is the standard schematic of any hydropower project. Typically, if you want to generate power, you desilt the water. There's a desilting chamber upstream uh, post reservoir. And so the water that comes will most of the time will be silt free. And that silt free water is generally hydrologically called hungry water. It has much greater capacity to erode the banks and the bed of the river. Before we get to the issues of the dam, let's first understand the issues in China's project management. China's decision to build the Medog Dam without consulting downstream nations has sparked rising geopolitical tensions in South Asia. The absence of a water-sharing treaty between China, India and Bangladesh only adds to the growing concerns and complications surrounding this project. This region is very, very important to all of South Asia, including China. So in that sense, uh, it will not only affect uh, as we see in India and Bangladesh, but it also uh, will affect Bhutan, which also affect Tibet in a large way. And also it has uh, the potential to affect a lot of other climatic kind of uh, patterns in the region, overall region, which are transboundary in nature and do not limit themselves into nation states. The Medog hydropower station is set to redefine the scale of renewable energy generation and bolster China's climate goals by significantly reducing reliance 
on coal-based power. But its implications pose enormous environmental risks. It is also the most technically challenging project because to build that kind of project you need to a huge tunnels across the great band to divert the water there and then have a major hydropower project and then transmission lines and roads and connectivities and so many things are really have to be built and they have also said that is the most riskiest project in the world when we actually say that a dam is being built on the surface water and only affects the surface water it is not true it is also affects the groundwater the systems and also affects the sky water the sky rivers there are three different levels the mist is being affected you know the fogs are being affected all of these patterns which in traditional communities use and with the indigenous knowledge to actually harvest their crops and earn their livelihood are going to be affected it it will have a very very uh, deep impact on generations to come you know uh, where the entire monsoonal patterns might change you know it could actually uh, degrade into a dry land area the brahmaputra and jamuna rivers are home to about 218 fish species including key species like hilsa and masir which are vital to the economy disrupting their migratory routes could jeopardize local fisheries affecting the livelihoods of 2 million fishermen across india and bangladesh there are several you know sacred sites for local communities as well in those areas uh, pemako being one you know which is actually considered as the last sangrila on earth sacred spaces are constructed because there is bi- biological diversity by local communities they are considered sacred because they are very very important forests or very very important habitats of you know um, endangered species as we call it endangered but then spiritual to many communities in living in those areas the dam is planned to be built in one of the most seismically active regions of the world the indo sangpo suture zone it has the potential to set off earthquakes trigger landslides or in the worst case cause catastrophic flooding there has been at least two 8.5 earthquakes that has already occurred in this region which is one of the highest in the world it's a very highly glaciated area of in the upstream the 1950 earthquake is also called the great medog earthquake you know where the medog dam is going to be built and is also going known as the great assam earthquake so in that context uh, earthquakes have been there and there is a history of earthquakes in that region and it called also can induce earthquake big dams have the potential to also alter geological kind of a, a landscape and time scale as well the dam will also grant china significant control over the river's water potentially threatening millions of people in countries downstream for india and its neighboring countries the path forward is clear engaging china through diplomatic channels is essential the goal to establish a framework for data sharing and joint water management that benefits everyone but there is another twist in this story india is now planning to construct its largest hydropower dam in arunachal pradesh marking a new chapter in water geopolitics along its tense border with china the project aims to counter the potential risks of a water bomb and water wars in the event of conflict if there is a lot of fluctuation in flows from the upstream that dam can store that water during uh, high flows and then release it in regulated way in the downstream area to neutralize those fluctuations the point is this downstream dam that upper siang dam that india wants to build is itself 11000 megawatt hydropower pump pool we should not be building a major project like that as a knee jerk response in response to a possible threat of a project that they may build it's not going to help us a dam for a dam will only make the entire ecology disruptive basically in the race for uh, building hydropower dams between india and china both india and china are actually destroying the himalayas and this could be a irreversible damage 
This could create even more tension with Bangladesh, which also depends heavily on the Brahmaputra River. While just 8% of the 580,000 square kilometer Brahmaputra basin lies in Bangladesh, this river system provides over 65% of the country's water every year. The worst impact of this tug of war between India and China would be felt by millions of people in Bangladesh. This is a very geopolitical game where local communities in the Himalayas are actually being trapped in and it is actually showing a very, very inherent democratic deficit. There is an international court's order which says that when an upstream country starts developing a hydropower project which has an impact on the downstream country, then the downstream country can actually demand a joint EIA. That's the international court's order. So India can also ask for a joint EIA when they propose the dam. We should be deciding our decision, taking our decision purely based on merits of our own development needs, our own people's needs, our own ecosystem needs, our own uh, future needs. As this battle for water and energy intensifies, the world watches closely. The Midog Dam, a symbol of China's growing power and ambition, could alter the environment and ecological balance of South Asia forever. While it promises clean energy and economic growth, it also raises grave questions about our planet's most vital resources. In the end, the Brahmaputra River continues to flow. But what will become of it? Will it be a lifeline for millions? or the catalyst for tensions that reshape the region's future.